Greetings everyone and welcome back to yet again another video. This video has been a train wreck. I've already recorded it once and it just turned out absolutely terrible. I had so many mishaps and it just, it, I'm just gonna start again. Looking through the actual phone itself today will probably be a lot quicker than it usually is because I know what's going on, but I'll try my best to keep you lot entertained during the rest of this video. So as per the title, we're looking at another Goo phone. It's not a recent Goo phone, but it's still a Goo phone. Honestly, whoever came up with the name of Goo Phone, I have no idea, but they're called Goo Phones for some reason. And as you can tell in the title, it is the S9 Plus we're looking at. Now as to where I got it from, I'm not going to say where I got it from because technically you can't go to the shops and just browse at the moment. You've got to only go to the shops for groceries and doctor's appointments and stuff. And well, this didn't come from any of... No, no. I paid $120 Australian for this item and I'm not going to say where, okay? Not going to say where because I might get into trouble for traveling somewhere else instead of where I should be going. But anywho, this is the device here. Now this is what the device looked like before I started the review. The Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus was released back in February of 2018. It is now 2020, so we're looking at it two years later, which is fine. And this is what it looks like now. I tried to get the tempered glass screen protector off this, and it is held on by God knows what. It is glued down into place, and I have tried so many things. I've tried WD-40, I've tried heat to get it off, and nah, nothing. I've tried using razor blades and sticking it underneath the glass, and I cannot get it off. It is just glued into place, and I've made an absolute mess of it. There's glass shards everywhere. In the middle of the previous video, I took the mat away to shake off all the shards of glass, and I was using my desk for a bit, and the exposure was going all terrible, and it just, it's a mishap of video. If you want me to release the absolute train wreck that is the first half of this video, let me know, and I can do it as a bonus, <laughs> if you want, because it's absolutely terrible. But anyways, with all that being said, this is the Goofine S9 Plus. It is currently going for about $122 US on DHgate at the moment, and the place where I got it from, which shall be unnamed, I showed them the DHgate listing, and they originally had $299 on this. I got them down to $120 because they knew it was a clone. Now, my one appears to be the exact same one from DHgate, except I have no box, but I imagine that the box that it would have came with would be exactly the same as a retail box, but just probably a couple of spelling mistakes here and there, and that's about it. Regarding the actual specifications of the S9 Plus, I'm going to leave a link down to GSM Arena in the description below for you to have a look at, but the main specifications for the S9 Plus in Europe would be the Exynos or Exynos 9810 chipset. In America, it would be the Snapdragon 845. It comes with 6 gigs of RAM, a 12 megapixel wide camera, and a 12 megapixel telephoto camera, an 8 megapixel front camera, 6.2 inch 1440 by 2960 AMOLED display, and a 3500 milliamp hour battery. They're just the basic specs, but if you want to go see all the rest of the specs, link is down in the description below. But of course, being a Goo phone, while it may look like an S9 Plus, it certainly is far from one. So anyways, going around this device, tempered glass screen protector, can't take it off, and now it's just made a mess of everywhere. All right, starting to have a look around this thing, we have our unknown megapixel camera, because I'm not too sure what this is, but it's supposedly an eight megapixel one, but we'll see. We have our earpiece underneath some fingerprints, and we have a bunch of sensors just here, and you can see the remnants of the glue. I'm sorry, it just looks so messy, but there appears to be a fake iris scanner just there, but we'll see during the teardown. I want to actually get this off because it causes one problem. The touch barely works. It only works if I'm wearing a glove and I'll demonstrate that very soon. At the bottom of the device, you can see the bezels. They're a little bit bigger than the actual retail S9 Plus. As you can see at the top there, you might be able to just see it, but you'll see it when it's powered on anyways. But the bezels, uh, they're a little bit bigger than usual. At the sides of the device, we have our volume rockers as well as our Bixby button, which actually does work and does function, sort of. I will show you. At the bottom, you can barely see the antenna bands located there. We have a Type-C USB port, headphone jack, microphone, and our speaker. Our speaker appears to be damaged, but there is actually some traces of mesh in there. But spoiler warning, the speaker isn't really that good. But once again, I'll show you later because I know what's in store. On the other side of the device is just our power button, and that is it. And at the top of the device is a secondary microphone as well as our SIM tray. And our SIM tray is already preloaded with a nano SIM and an SD card, but there is also an option to install two nano SIMs if you wanted to. Coming to the back of the device, we can see this uh, psychedelic blue that's going on here. And it actually does look quite nice, except it actually didn't have a lot of these scratches on it before I made the video. When I was in the middle of making the video, all these scratches appeared because of all the little glass shards everywhere. This is no longer worth anything. Not that it was worth anything in the first place, but, you know, so be it. At the top, we have our dual rear cameras. I'll give you a moment there just to 
take a guess which one's real and which one's a fake one. It's very obvious, but you know, they tried, I guess. In the sensor area, we have our single LED flash, which appears to be a bit of yellow paper actually stuck on top of the LED flash, and the actual sensors themselves appear to be complete duds. It just looks like there's a piece of black tape underneath it. That's it. We have a fingerprint scanner there. Now the camera and fingerprint sensor area raises a bit of a red flag for me because this certain colorway usually has the black glass camera lens, and then the fingerprint is a little bit silver, whereas some other photos show that that's blue. So I'm not too sure what's going on there, but if you guys can shed some light on that, let me know. But I have a feeling that this all black color scheme for it all is a telltale sign of a fake. Maybe. I could be wrong. Let me know. Uh, we have our Samsung logo there, which is just underneath the glass. It's not glass. Then we have our information. We have our Galaxy S9 Plus. The Galaxy font is correct, but the S9 Plus font is a little bit off. We have some regulation marks and all that sort of stuff. The model number is an SMG9600UD, which according to Google, does not match up to any real S9 Plus devices. However, it does come up with a bunch of reviews done by other people, which are very short. This review is gonna be pretty in depth, but if you wanna watch some other videos straight to the point, there's plenty out there. We also have some FCC regulation numbers, designed and engineered by Samsung, made in Vietnam. And then we have DEC098, which I'm not too sure what that all is there. Usually, in my case anyways, there's an IMEI or a serial number present, but there's not, it's just all random numbers, so I'm not too sure what that is either. Now, as for build quality, this is where it kind of loses it because it's entirely made of plastic. While it's quite heavy, the back panel is all plastic, and the sides of the device are all plastic. The only glass that's present on this device is the glass and the tempered glass, which is more powerful than the actual glass itself. And it has fingerprints all over it. This device is an absolute fingerprint magnet, so you'll see bits where it's clean and then it's not clean. And also, just a very quick comparison, here's my S10, and this is the Groofine S9 Plus. When I picked this up, I thought it was quite thick and quite heavy, but putting my S10 on top shows that it's actually not that much thicker than the S10, to be honest. I actually don't have a real S9 or S9 Plus leg around. I will get one eventually, but it kind of sucks because I would have used that to compare it to, but I can't do that, unfortunately. But the S10's kind of close enough so you can see what's going on. Now, the phone's upside down at the moment, but the USB port is very close to the back sort of thing, whereas, like, the S10 is in the middle, just smack bang right in the middle. But the bottom of the S9 Plus actually looks like this here, which pretty much matches this, except the speaker area looks damaged. And I'd say the previous owner probably damaged it. When I switch this on, I'll also show the screen comparison as well between this and the S10, because the S10 screen is bigger than the Goo Phone one, because this says it's 6.2 inch, but it's not, not quite. Okay, powering on the device. We have Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, secured by Knox. Looks legit. Sort of. Kind of. Not really. A little bit. No. I'll speed up the rest of the boot process so you don't have to wait. and there it all is powered up. Now, I'm gonna quickly get the fingerprint sensor out of the way, because I've already set that and played around with it, and it's um, it's obviously fake, but I'll show you how fast it is. Look at that, very responsive. But let's just say we wanna, I don't know, unlock it with a Band-Aid. Okay, can we unlock it with one of my tattoos, for example? Yes, we can. Can I unlock it with my elbow? Yes, we can. You might be able to also unlock this device with certain other body parts, but I shall not name them. Anyways, uh, here it is, booted up. Android 8.0, stock looking, for the most part anyways, it's pretty much stock. There's a slight problem. Now, sometimes the touch is okay, and then sometimes the touch just doesn't want to work. It seems to be okay now, but when I first had it, the reason why I wanted to take the tempered glass screen protector off was because the touch was just not working at all, but now it seems to be okay. Mind you, I do have to press a little bit harder for it to work, but that's okay. As I said, I was wearing gloves because of all the glass and stuff, and I found that I could actually use it much easier with gloves on, but I think I'll just stick to using this for the time being anyways. So booting up, it says we have 4G. Now I've already called this device and it accepts calls, which is great, and the actual loudspeaker itself is quite good, but we don't have dual stereo speakers like the real deal. It's only just the bottom firing speaker. But this earpiece is actually quite loud. I don't know why they didn't implement this to actually be a secondary speaker, but it's not, unfortunately. All right, so on our home screen here, we have email, camera, gallery, Galaxy apps, calendar, phone, contacts, messages, and internet. Scrolling up, we have in Google, voice search, and just Google. In Samsung, we have email, my files, sound recorder, Galaxy apps, video player, and S-Health, or 
We'll, tr we'll try all these, don't worry. We have Samsung Notes, Phone, Contacts, Calendar, Settings, Clock, Gallery, Camera, Messages, Music, Play Store, Calculator, Downloads, Internet, S-Note, Sim Toolkit, and YouTube. And then the rest of the apps are all the ones that I've already preloaded onto this. I haven't launched any of these apps as of yet, so that part's all going to be new to me, but everything else I already know what's going on. So let's visit the Bixby button, our much-loved Bixby button on all our Samsung devices. What do you do? It opens Bixby. We can see we've got some Bixby stuff. We'll go to View Detail. The phone is very laggy, but I can tell you that uh, this won't do anything. I shall show you, because up in the Settings icon here, it comes up with Settings. However, you can't press on anything. Nothing works. But I can go back easy. It's not a touch issue. They went so far to actually port Bixby over to this Goo phone and just actually not have anything working on it. Which is actually a lot more useful than the actual Bixby preloaded on Samsung devices anyway, so I guess that's a positive. You can also remap the Bixby button in settings to open camera or something like that, which is something that the actual normal Samsung devices don't do. So far, Goo Phone, you're doing well. You're doing well. Uh, but going through the apps quickly, if we choose email, we can set up our email, which doesn't look like Samsung email. Camera, I've already done the camera test, but here it all is in all of its glory anyways. So let's see which one's the real one. Top, bottom, top, bottom. Yeah, the top one's real, bottom one is fake. But within the actual camera settings itself, it's very plain. There is nothing terribly fantastic going on here if you swipe left and right, I think. No, up and down, sorry. You can change to the back camera and the front camera, just like that. Coming into settings, we have the picture size of 13 megapixels. With the photos that I've already taken, it's far from that. We can choose to change the ISO settings and exposure and all that sort of stuff, but I didn't do any of that. I just left it all on default during the picture test, which the pictures are quite blurry because of the touch issue that I was having, I was using the volume buttons to take pictures, so they all came out a little bit tacky. But I think you all get the idea of the photos that this thing takes anyways. Video quality is on fine, which I believe is 720p, but I can't quite remember. Otherwise, literally nothing else in here. Now with HDR, it's currently off at the moment. All right, so let me take a sample photo with this for you all. So let's just do just here, fairly fast. Now toggle HDR. During my photo test, I was taking photos with HDR, and it turns out that the only thing that's different is the ISO changes ever so slightly, and the shutter speed is a lot longer. That's really it. The photos look exactly the same. But anyways, I'll uh, splice in the photos and videos that I took with this device right here for you all, and uh, enjoy them for what they are. And testing the video quality on the Goo Phone S9 Plus. Start with the frogs as usual. Once again, the same thing when we do autofocusing. It goes all dark. But it works. I don't think there's any AIS or anything like that. It looks pretty smooth at the moment. Just going for a close up on details on the wall. Very blurry, as far as I can see anyways. I just woke up, so I can't really see anything, to be fairly honest. And poor old Stuart. He's still alive. He's losing paint, but he's still okay. The lemon tree is getting slightly ridiculous at this point in time. Lemons. Like two weeks ago, this was a tiny, tiny little shrubbery, and now it's this massive. Ah, there's a bee, there's a bee, there's a bee, there's a bee. Can you see the bee? Look, there's a bee. Whee! As long as I don't annoy him, he won't annoy me. Whee! Okay, that's enough. 
and testing the front video quality of the Goofone S9 Plus. I look terrible because I've only just woken up and it's only 5 o'clock in the evening but I'm nocturnal so it's all good. Um, video quality seems average, probably 640 by 480 um, Not really much else to say to be fairly honest. So while the photos and videos from this aren't really the best, the cameras on this are a complete different kettle of fish to the real S9 Plus hardware, but the only thing the Goofone seems to get right is that it takes pictures, like the real deal. That's another positive, I guess. I just wanted to show the comparison between the S10 screen and the S9 Plus Goofone screen, and as you can see, there is a considerable difference. If I hold it just to where the bezels line up, which is about there, yeah, it's definitely not 6.2 inch, because this is 6.1 inch. And also regarding the screen as well, now while it's hard to see, the glass is curved, but the LCD itself is not curved, it ends just before the curve, which is something that's usual for Goo phones anyways. But screen resolution wise, it doesn't actually look too bad, to be honest. I think it's 720p, according to DHgate it's supposed to be 720p anyways. It's a half reasonable display, and while I was using a heat gun to try and get this screen protector off, I burnt all here, I made a huge burn in mark. It was all black, and it recovered probably after about 30 or 40 seconds. And it was lucky, because it hasn't caused any damage. Jerry Rig Everything's burn tests actually have a purpose. Trust me, they do. Coming to the edge panel, it actually does work. Um, and you can scroll between different apps and stuff. And you can do torch. And then that's supposed to be weather, but nothing appears. You can come into settings and change it. The tools feature on the edge panel uh, can only have the torch and that's it. Whereas the real deal has like the ruler, compass and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, this doesn't really do much. Also, 3D Touch barely works. When it recognizes it, it vibrates. Oh, time to use fingerprint again. Cool. Coming further into the applications, we have Galaxy apps on here, which on my first test, it didn't do anything. And now it comes up with something because I'm connected to Wi-Fi. However, give it a bit of time and this is what comes up. And that's what it comes up with. Connection failed. But if I was to go game, rank, class, gear, and even settings, version info, Galaxy Apps, this is the latest version. Coming further into the rabbit hole, if you actually open up one of those links, it opens up what looks like the Samsung internet application loaded on Samsung devices. However, it's actually opened up static.barter.com, which seems like it's just copy and pasted from the Samsung website. But the Samsung internet application on here is almost a carbon copy, almost, of the real deal about Samsung Internet. See? New version we can do. So let's update. Or maybe not. Maybe we can't update. But they've went so far to actually have this all come up, so it's quite impressive. But all in all, Galaxy Apps doesn't do much, apart from just load, and then that's it. But I commend their effort for porting over some of the Samsung apps onto this device. Calendar itself uh, looks like a calendar, nothing special. Uh, phone, we can do the test menu. That actually sounded cool. Da, 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 da. Uh, we can do all the test functions, but as you seen on my S10 just before, there's a lot less functions going on here. But we can test the speaker. Spoiler warning, it sounds horrible. <laughs> but yeah, nothing really going on in there. Otherwise, contacts and messages look pretty much the same as the real deal. Um, as we said, Samsung internet kind of looks like a ad. <laughs> yeah, random ads just pop up on this whenever they want. I do have a Gmail account signed onto this, but it's one that I don't really care about, so it's all good. Further into applications, Google, we just have voice search and Google, as we've seen. Samsung, email, we've opened up. My files, which comes up with 64 gigs of storage, which is incorrect. This is what it comes up with on my computer as well, by the way. Which is funny, because it says that it's a G960F. We'll get to that when we get into settings. In Sound Recorder, I have done a test already. It should be here. Hello. Does this work? I hope it works. The speaker makes it sound even more terrible than it actually is. But the microphones themselves on here aren't too bad, to be honest. Uh, Galaxy apps we've already taken a look at. Doesn't work. Uh, video player. Shows all my various video tests that I've done over the past on this SD card. Within S Health itself, we've seen this on the Goo phone, and I believe the Explore one had it as well. But if we go into Heart, find the sensor. Okay, so let's just 
do that right. Now it came up with 89 beats per minute last time I tested it. So let's see what it comes up with now. Okay, that's, wow, alrighty. So let's just put it down, press start, and just, just, just wait. Just sit back and wait. Let it test my heartbeat wirelessly. That is some space age technology right there, folks. Wireless. I love how it says put the hand on the sensor. Done. We can also see UV settings, but uh, this is not for clinical or medical. Same thing on the Goofo N07. Now we do have Samsung Notes preloaded onto here. And there it is. Now I'm actually going to address something really quickly. A lot of people on my Note 10 Plus video that I done a couple of months back, that's my most popular video on my YouTube channel at the moment with almost 500,000 views, so thank you very much for that, I really do appreciate it. However, a lot of people are picking on my accent. I'm sorry that my Australian accent sounds so horrible. A lot of people have just decided to take the piss out of me and say, he's saying NART 10? Is he saying NART 10? N-A-R-T. I look back on it and go, no, I'm saying NOTE. Samsung, NOTE. Turn on YouTube subtitles right now. NOTE. Note, note, noting, notes, Samsung, notes, 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 notes. If that does show anything different, then you've all proved me wrong. Look, I don't mind people having a joke with me every now and again, but every now and again, they're just a tad bit silly and you kind of go, really? Okay, whatever. And within clock, shows the time, that's the current time, and uh, that's really it. Gallery looks like gallery, you don't want to see my ugly mug 17 times on the screen. What the fuck? Did I just do that? Oh, that's right. It has air brows. I completely forgot that it has this. Well, there you go. More space age technology. Eat that, Pixel 4. Messages looks like messages. Music is pretty plain. Play Store I've already signed into and it does work. Uh, calculator is also just calculator. It does what it's supposed to do. Downloads, internet, and we have S-Note on here, which it's funny because we don't have a pen. Also, Samsung Galaxy S3 because I believe they've just went well, probably from an S3 clone, to be fairly honest, but hey, let's, uh, let's open it up and... Beautiful, it works. And then we just have Sim Toolkit and YouTube, and that is basically it for apps. There's nothing else going on here. Altogether, it looks like stock Android 8.0 with TouchWiz, but just bringing down the menu sort of makes it look kind of... I can't do anything else, but that's okay. Um, it kind of looks like it, but I'd say they've done an alright job making it look like the real deal. Now, if we jump into settings, we'll just quickly go through settings because there's not really much going on here. In connect, just says connect, but okay. We have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, SIM card manager, data usage, and more connection settings. There is no NFC as per usual, but if I go into networks just here, we have 3G and 4G. However, if I search for available networks, it only comes up with 3G. So unfortunately it doesn't do 4G, but that was to be expected, of course. Sounds and vibration, pretty much all the usual stuff. Uh, sound enhancement, we have best loudness because it's a MediaTek-based chipset that's in this device. So we always get the best loudness or best order. Uh, other sounds, just the usual. Notifications, block allow priority. Now here we can actually see all of the installed applications on this device. Now I'm gonna do a virus test just in case. But I'm going to show you the system. And we actually do have Nougat, which is quite interesting because this is actually running Nougat as far as I know right now. Once we get into the specs, I'll see if it's true or not. But the Easter egg that's on here is actually Nougat, and I'll show you that soon. Uh, but coming through here, if you guys want to take a quick pause and have a look at all of these applications that are installed on here, Brower, by the way, not a browser, it's a Brower, uh, feel free to pause the video and tell me which ones you think are dodgy and which ones might be all right. So what I mean by the touch, it's kind of a little bit strange. But yeah, you should be able to see what's going on here. Feel free to dig through that and let me know which ones are 
pretty dodgy. There's a couple in there that I've seen which raises a couple of red flags to me, but we'll see during the virus test if it picks up anything. In display, brightness and font, we have mirror vision, which is usual on MediaTek devices, I believe. Smart pause, that actually does work because I was testing video and I looked away and it paused. So that's cool. Always on display, we've pretty much seen that. And uh, that's basically it in here. Wallpaper and theme, I love how all of the settings here, they've just got the word, comma, and no space. It's just all bunched together. So be it. It's fine. It's a clone. Whatever. Wallpaper and theme. If I can go onto it. There we go. And there's a bunch of the default Samsung S9 wallpapers already preloaded on here. I selected the purple wallpaper just because it looked cool. But all these wallpapers are pretty much straight off the retail unit. The colors are quite nice. I gotta say that. For a cheapo clone, the screen isn't actually that bad. Advanced features, we have S Pen. This is not a... Okay, fair enough. There's no game features or anything like that. Motions and gestures, you've seen the air browse, which does work. The edge screen, we've had a look at, which does kind of work, sort of. And Smart Manager, here it all is here. RAM, we have 24%, which says 4 gig of RAM in here, but the real S9 Plus has 6 gigs of RAM, but we have 1.3 gigs free. I'm pretty sure it's 1 gig. I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, battery, we have 88% remaining. We have 6 hours left, which, uh, yeah. These clones don't really have the best battery life. Storage still says 64 gigs, but we'll try and prove that wrong. Device security just comes up with that. There's no actual device security built onto here, uh, but you can clean all. Ta-da! I don't know what it does, but it does something. Probably just closes all the background apps and goes, there you go, and then reopens them again. Apps is pretty much what we've seen beforehand with all the applications installed, so we've already done that. Lock screen and security, which we've already seen the fingerprint working, which is uh, just... Just gold. Now let's say we wanted to do the iris unlock. It comes up with that. Now the iris unlock camera is over there, but it just uses the front camera. So obviously there's no dedicated iris camera, but uh, you just put your eyeballs there and it unlocks the device. Clouds and accounts. Coming to accounts, we have, if I remember, yes, we have something called system clean. I have no idea. I literally have no idea. But I've already added a Google account, and it's just a random one, so I don't really care. It's all good. But if we go Add Account, you can do Duo, Exchange, Firefox, Google, Internet, and then System Clean. So let's go Internet, for example. And it opens up with a place to actually log in to your Samsung account. Now, this could be quite legit. This could be the web client of logging into your Samsung account. But I would not log into my Samsung account on this in a million years because it's connected to my actual device. So I would not do this. But uh, if you have a Google phone and want to sign into your Samsung account on it, feel free and let me know. But I, I definitely won't be doing it. And then add account and then do system clean. What? What does it... It doesn't do anything. Another strange dodgy addition to this device, I guess. Uh, general management. Not a lot going on in here. Now the keyboard that's actually built onto this device is the My Keyboard. Need phone state permission to get phone ID. Allow keyboard to make and manage phone calls. No, that's all good. Intelligence of me, or my. It's not the Xiaomi one. I know that, it's not It's not the Xiaomi one. Yeah, it's just pretty interesting to see that this is what they've put on here, instead of trying to rip off the Samsung keyboard. See, the keyboard on this just doesn't look like the Samsung keyboard. Like, this is the S10 one. I don't know. They're using that Mi keyboard or My Keyboard, which is very strange. Probably has some sort of dodgy features going on in it, but who knows. Uh, in about help, what can we get? Can we get any help? Download center for a Samsung. This doesn't look like Samsung. What? Yeah, HTML. It's basically preloaded on the device. Uh, <laughs> Galaxy S6. Okay. Well, that's where they've borrowed it from. Fair enough. I should have known by the model numbers, actually. Developer options. I've already enabled developer options and went through this. I've disabled the window animations to speed up the device ever so slightly. I can't increase touch sensitivity on this uh, because there's no option for it. And in about phone, finally, yay. We have the model number as SMG960F, which corresponds to the European Galaxy S9, not the S9+. Plus. Bit strange, it just came up with S6 before, and now it's coming up with an S9, but it says S9, there's too many names going on here. Anyways, Android version, if we do the Easter egg, it comes up with Nougat, as I said before. Uh, but it's the cat Easter egg, which I'm not too sure how to use. I prefer the marshmallow, you know, playing the game and stuff. If it's actually running Android 7, I'll be taken back, but let's just see what the other applications have to say. 
The security level is March 1, 2017, but the S9 Plus actually came out in February 2018, so that's a bit of a telltale sign there, I guess, and it shipped with Android 8.0. Baseband version, kernel version, build number, and the custom build version. Nothing out of the ordinary there. 2019 was when this kernel version was compiled. In status, we don't really have anything special here except for our serial number, which is 01234567898ABCDEF, as per usual. And in sim status, it just says that we have HSPA, which corresponds to 3G, and not 4G as it says up above. Alright, so I've covered basically all of the applications on here, but we'll go ahead and do the speaker test real quickly. And of course, for the speaker test, we'll be using BFG Division from Doom 2016, only because it's still one of my favourite tracks. I'll also try a no copyright sounds one as well. But I've got my little meter here. The volume is already at max, so let me go ahead and play it for you. It sounds bad. Really bad. I can feel the inside of my ears ringing. I didn't have it set on max, but I will have it for the next one. Yeah, the speaker is definitely not the best. It sounds like it's had some sort of damage done to it, as I said during the earlier part of the video, but once we tear it down, I'll have a look and see what's going on in there. But it's definitely not the best speaker. Coming to the YouTube test, let's load up one of my videos and uh, play it and see how we go. It's a 5 volt, 2 amp, 9 volt, 2 amp, and 12 volt at 1.5 amp, so it does have quick charge support, which is good. It is a bit heavy as well, definitely has some weight to it, so that is good to see. 720p YouTube does work but occasionally you'll just see it just start to lag a little bit. But for the ultimate test, I'm going to load that 4K video that I've shown in a couple of other videos before. I'll link the creators down in the description as well. But I also want to just show that video just for the colors as well for the display. So here is the 4K video, but it's only playing at 720p and 30fps. Uh, well, not 30fps. But at least you can see the colors are quite nice, which is kind of good. But it's, yeah, it's lagging along, unfortunately. Seriously, go watch this video. It's really relaxing. I mean, it's only five minutes long, but it's just very relaxing and very nice to have a look at. It just looks beautiful. Alrighty, now we're getting into the fun stuff. We've got to go through the applications I have installed on here. So we've got Malwarebytes, CPU-Z, Ida64, Antutu, System Info, Geekbench 4, Minecraft. Now I've decided on another game to test, Crazy Taxi, because this was originally an arcade game, and then they ported it to the Dreamcast. So if it doesn't run on this, but it runs perfectly on the Dreamcast, then there's seriously something wrong. But we'll try it anyways. Um, what do we go with first, though? I actually want to try gaming, so let's do the gaming test first. Come on, Minecraft. You can do it. I'll just leave it load. It's fine. Alrighty, now obviously due to the touch control... Oh, okay. Well, I say that, but it actually kind of works now. Alright. Where are the sounds? What happened to the sounds? Okay, sounds are working. Okay, a little bit laggy in some areas. If you look at the ground at 60 FPS, well, uh, not really. If you look at the sky at 60 FPS, ah, uh, look, it works. Which, surprisingly, it has ran on many devices quite fine, although not at the most stable frame rate, but it works for the most part. What I'm interested in is trying Crazy Taxi and seeing how that goes. I also love how the edge panel is still present. They didn't work out how to lock it there, so it just sort of floats around. So if I did that, it moves to that side as well. It's fair enough. Now, I've just realized that there's copyrighted music in this game, so I've just had to mute the music. But that's okay. We're just here for the gameplay. What the hell? What is going on? Well, it runs for five seconds and then it just pauses. Well done, Smalls. What an excellent game choice that was. So the phone just decided to reboot randomly. Uh, obviously, I was overloading its absolute beastly processor that's in this, and it just decided to crash to cool down a little bit. I think that's what happened anyways. But uh, gaming-wise, Minecraft worked, sort of, and Crazy Taxi, I'll never use that again. I'll uh, have to find something else. What is it doing? What is this phone doing? It is just doing random things. It's probably going to come up with an ad any second now. I really just want to finish this review 
get my Gmail off and then tear it down because if I ruin it, I don't really care. What we'll do is run a virus scan. Why not? We'll do virus scan, Geekbench, applications, and then tear it down and call this a video, I think. Good old Malwarebytes. Some things may be false positives, some things may not be. Who knows? We'll see. Let it do its thing. And then we'll assess the situation after it finishes. Okay, so it has been quite a while. I decided to just leave this run because it was taking quite a while. And I decided to go get some McDonald's. And once again, I decided to get an ice cream and they overfilled it and it spilled onto the mat. This mat is cursed, I swear. Anyways, uh, here we have the virus results. The first one is the Brower, not browser. The second one is the System Clean. The third one is the Net Manager which appears when an ad comes on the screen and you press recents, it comes up with net manager. So that's what's causing the ads to pop up. The next one is one of the FRP bypasses that I have on my SD card. That's nothing, don't worry about that. And the other one is weather. So that's what Malwarebyte says. When I came across this one in the accounts and I thought, what's this sort of thing? In the back of my mind, I went, it's dodgy. It's 100% dodgy. And well, sure enough, it is. These could be false positives, but because of the nature of this device, I would say most likely. Ignore this one though. But anyways, that took a little bit longer than expected, but you get the idea. This wouldn't be really safe to use as a daily driver, I don't think, considering it pops up with ads every now and again. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run Geekbench 4. I can't install Geekbench 5. I can't get the APK for it and it's not on the Play Store. I don't know. So I've got Geekbench 4, I'll try that. We'll see what it comes up with, but it should tell us it says Android 7, MT6580, which we've seen plenty of times before. Uh, we'll let this run and see what it comes up with. And the Geekbench 4 scores come back as 414 for single core and 1215 for multi core. Uh, spec wise, though, Android 7, SMG960F, which is the S9. Memory is 1 gig. MT6580 processor, which is a quad core, 1.3 gigahertz, which pretty much is what I thought this would be all along. But otherwise, yeah, that's, uh, that's nothing too impressive. Well, now it's time to check out the applications with CPU-Z, Antutu, ID64, and System Info. So we'll start with Antutu first. Okay, in Antutu Benchmark, it appears to list all of the S9 Plus's actual specs. Then it says 4 gigs of RAM, whereas I've said the S9 Plus has 6 gig, but this is looking like it's an S9 clone to look like an S9 Plus clone. Uh, we'll do multi-touch, if, if it works. 5 point multi-touch. That's quite amazing. According to the SDK version, it is 24, which is Android 7. So I actually think this is running Android 7, which is a bit of a bonus, I guess. Otherwise, nothing much else in Antutu, so we'll go on to the next one. Now, Ida64 will probably show exactly the same thing, but I'll check it just in case. Okay, so we get some different things here. We do see that the hardware is MT6580, serial number. The installed RAM is 1 gigs of low-power DDR4X. Internal storage still says 64 gig. In display, it says 720 by 1440. Now, it says here that it is a Super AMOLED display, but that is false. It's an LCD. The GPU renderer is the Mali 400 MP as usual. In battery, it just says 3000 milliamp hours, but we'll see what the other apps have to say. All right, let's move on to CPU-Z. A MediaTek Qualcomm Snapdragon 845. Sure, why not? Okay, now it's saying that it's a Galaxy S9 with a 5.8 inch display, but it still says the wrong resolution. Uh, total RAM 4 gig, but available RAM is 220 meg. Battery says the same thing as Ida64, which is 3000 milliamp hours. In sensors, we just have the bare minimum, which is the usual, and that's it. Let's move on to the last one. And there we go, it is running Android 7. That's good in a way, because I assumed that this would be running Marshmallow. But there you go, I was wrong. As we know, the MT6580 quad core is running. Internal memory still says 64 gig. Hmm, otherwise in RAM, confirmed, one gig. Screen size, 720 by 1344. So 720p display as it said on DHgate, which isn't too bad to be honest, 720p for this. It's not half bad. Battery settings, all standard. The cameras say 13 megapixels for the back and eight for the front, but we know that's incorrect. All right, let me try another application and see what that says. All right, so we're running some random application. It does say that the flash is eight gigs, which seems about correct. I don't think it would be 64 gigs. And opening up Droid Info, shows us that we have eight gigs internal storage with 2.8 gigs free. Cameras still say 13 megapixels primary and eight for the secondary one. So I'll have to look on the actual ribbon cables themselves on the cameras to see what they actually are. If they've got a code on them, I'll Google them and let you all know. 
but otherwise I think we get a good idea of what's going on in this thing. Alright, well I think I have covered absolutely everything on this device, I think. We've checked the specs, checked the camera, done some gaming, and we've done a whole heap of other stuff. So I think now is the time to jump into the teardown and see what's inside of this thing, because I want to know the actual battery size, uh, as I said, the cameras, and all that sort of stuff. So let's power this thing off. There we go. Works eventually. And now let us begin the teardown. Now the plastic back feels like it's literally held on by nothing. So I want to test that theory. Let's, let's see. Alright. Three, two, one. Oh. There we go. There's our uh, lovely plastic back panel there. Oh, I may have uh, bent it out of shape. Oh, that's fine. That's all good. Okay, so first look inside of the device. It says we have a 2800 milliamp hour battery, which I definitely was not expecting that. I thought it would have been like a 17, maybe 1800 milliamp hour, because battery life on this while testing wasn't exactly the greatest, but there you go. 2800 milliamp hours, made by DSW. I will Google this and let you know any details that I come up with. All right, at the bottom here, there is four screws that hold on this plastic piece. So I'll take these off and we can have a look at what's under here. Lifting the plastic piece up reveals our speaker. The coin style vibration motor, headphone jack, the flex ribbon there, our USB-C port, and our microphone just there as well. It looks like the flex ribbon for the display is right here, so I will try not to kill that. Otherwise, let's have a look at this speaker area. Yeah, I was right, there's nothing there. There we go. Well, that proves that one. There's absolutely nothing there except for that on the actual speaker itself. So, it's missing a piece, but it's okay. Well, the subboard is pretty small, there's nothing really much going on there. Alright, I'll go ahead and put this back down, and then we'll start taking apart the top. Alright, so there's a few screws holding down the plastic piece here, so I'll go ahead and tape these off. Also, you're probably wondering why there's paper towel underneath this, because I don't want any more of the glass shards to go on my mouse mat, that's all. Okay, that's everything. So here's a piece of plastic taken off. When I was taking it off, I seen this flex ribbon, and I thought, that's a bit strange. Surely the camera can't be real. And it turns out, it leads to the fingerprint sensor. This was working because I was using my fingers, my hand, my elbow to unlock it. So this here works, but not as a true fingerprint scanner. It probably actually is one, but the actual security features aren't present on the device. That's my thoughts anyways. The sensors themselves are just plastic underneath them. Unfortunately, the second camera is a fake. There's our flash just there, which is just hanging around. Uh, there's our camera just here. I will Google the code that's on the camera here. But otherwise, I would say it's probably a 5 megapixel one. Maybe. Just a guess anyways. No optical image stabilization, of course. Now, I have a small problem. Everything on the motherboard is basically soldered down. If I take this board out, I risk killing this whole thing. Because the volume buttons, the power button, everything, all soldered down. This here, I'm not too sure what this is. Uh, the front camera is soldered down as well. So I have to be extremely careful. So, I'll do my best. Okay, this is pretty much as far as I can go, unfortunately. So that flex ribbon off to the side leads to the front sensor array, which is just the light sensors, and then just a notification LED, and then something else there, I'm not too sure what that is. Our front camera is just a little guy, but I don't see any codes on it. So unfortunately, I won't be able to tell you what that is, but I'll probably take a guess and say 2 megapixel, maybe. If I continue tearing it down, I'm going to probably damage it. Honestly, at this point in time, I don't want to damage it any more than it already is, because I do want to keep this as a collectible. So I'm just going to safely put it back together. I did it. I put it back together. And there's still ads just popping up. That's, that's great. Yeah, I managed to put it back together. It wasn't easy. The motherboard would not screw back down, because there was a certain little piece of plastic that decided to come away, and it was stuck under the motherboard. This little piece here, this is the fake iris scanner, that decided to fall out from the front of the phone to underneath the motherboard. Obviously, I didn't end up installing this back in because it's just that much of a hassle getting that motherboard out with everything soldered onto it. But yeah, there you go. There's our iris scanner. A couple of things that I didn't do in the teardown. I didn't take the battery out, but I did do it off camera. And it's basically the same as the Goo Phone and Explore. It's just a very thin metal frame underneath and it's just surrounded by plastic. That's really it. And the only thermal cooling that the actual CPU has is just the back of the LCD, and that's it. So very cheaply made, as to be expected, but I managed to get it all back together, and it does 
function somewhat. There we go. That's better. All right, well, if you want to pause the video right about now to read the specifications of the Goofone S9 Plus, feel free to do that. As I said earlier during the video, there is a link in the description to GSM Arena for the proper specs of the real S9 Plus. But since this is kind of an S9 as an S9 Plus clone, with remnants of it being a Galaxy S6, it just, it's really confusing. I honestly just... Yeah, it says it's an S9 Plus, but the model numbers say it's an S9. I, I, I honestly do not know. But you have caused me nothing but grief over the last couple of days. So I'm, I'm finally finished with it. I, I'm done with it. I think that I've covered absolutely everything that I need to cover on this. As I've said during my update posts on YouTube, this whole review has been a complete train wreck. And it is still a train wreck going at almost 46 or 47 minutes long. So... I think I'm just going to completely wrap it up here and finish up. It's done. If you want me to release the first half of the train wreck, which I have scrapped, uh, please let me know and I'll just put it out as a bonus video. If you want, it's up to you. <laughs> Anyways, everyone, I apologize for the quality of this video. It is not up to my standards for sure. I do hope you guys got some entertainment out of this, though. These things are certainly fun to look at, but sometimes things just don't go the way you expect them to. And unfortunately, this device proved to be nothing but a disaster. So thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And YouTube has actually integrated timestamps into the actual video, so you'll see chunks of the video that I've separated with my timestamps, so you'll actually see how long each segment goes for, which is cool. I like that feature. Well done, YouTube. You've actually done something good for once. Anyways, everyone, that is it for me. Be good people, take care of one another, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video, which at this point in time could be absolutely anything. Bonus, let's do a Ben test. It's solid. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.